Hi, welcome to this brand new series on AWS Certified Security Speciality. These are all real certification questions. The chances of same or similar questions coming in the exam is pretty high. This is the first part of this playlist. In this part, we will look at questions which are linked with these topics. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. There are several playlists on this channel which will help you with clearing cloud certifications, primarily on AWS, Azure, and GCP. Let us jump into the questions. This is the first one. Basically, you have an application which references static content on S3 through CloudFront and Route 53. Something like Netflix. The video files that we view on Netflix, these are static files. So we would keep that on S3. And CloudFront will be used for content distribution, which also has a bit of caching. So we understand where such applications will be used. Now, the problem here is we are always having a risk of DDoS attacks. So DDoS is primarily distributed denial of service. So why do people do such attacks? They want to bring Netflix down. They want to make sure it is not available for its customers. So if Netflix can handle 100,000 customers concurrently, so DDoS attackers will create 2 million requests, concurrent requests, and it will jam the application. So now what to do? There are four options. Okay, out of these four options, which one is correct? So if you see option B here, option B is wrong. The reason for that is, you know, it's saying the security principle should get foot bucket policy access. So if there is a thief and a theft happened, so the solution cannot be that the cop gets access to that system. Similarly, D is wrong as well because it says that you want to give the access to the cop. Okay, so a theft happened at your home and now instead of catching who did that, the cop is saying, please provide me access to your home so that I can come and sleep there. Now the answer has to be between A and C. The problem with A is it is asking you to delete the original trail. So if a DDoS has happened and you want to analyze and see what happened, who messed it up, if you delete the trail, you will lose all those information. So this is wrong. That leaves us with only one option that is C. So our confusion is solved. This is the answer. So this answer ensures that you are just updating the existing bucket policy with a new log prefix. There is a path of in the S3 bucket. You are not replacing or deleting any original trails. This is my final answer. Let's look at the next one. So there is an e-commerce site and DDoS attack happens. And when it happens, the site is not accessible. Now, obviously, the security team will be worried about it and it has to ensure in the future it doesn't happen again if it happens they are prepared this is the goal and in terms of preparation they want to quickly you know handle these assaults we want to choose two measures guard duty if you see this guard duty see guard duty is primarily not for DDoS. it you can get the logs from vpc flow and cloud trail and other logs and it will analyze it has intelligent uh, threat intelligent feed detecting systems it will detect malicious ips and addresses etc it will do all of those stuff but not in conjunction with ddos option b talks about aws shield this is primarily a service which is designed for ddos protection and it is a managed service that means aws manages itself so it will automatically do the inline mitigations to minimize the application downtime and latency that is what we want our question says 
that people people are not able to access the website that means there is a downtime and shield will prevent that downtime so this is our answer first answer so c is like a reactive solution where you will monitor it and use lambda functions to block the ips and so on this is a very reactive solution a proactive solution is preferred over a reactive solution similarly d d is not even a solution meant for this purpose because it is talking about aws config and systems manager which is linked with uh, identifying configuration changes and we never use cloud trails and cloud watch events for ddos e suggests to use waf to create rules so this is a firewall solution which will protect your web application so you can create rules to decide how traffic will reach your application and it will block common attacks like sql injection cross site scripting which is a part of ddos now this is a whole article how waf can be used to mitigate ddos events so if you see this manually mitigating ddos attacks so they are using waf here and aws shield advance they are not using to uh, guard duty hence my answer is correct this is the final answer let's look at this one end user and customers access is maintained in cognito they directly access dynamo db so now those customers who had access you want to mark the customers some customers as suspended and when they are suspended they will have different rights that means they can log in for sure they can log in but they cannot make changes okay so that means if there is an application they can log in do something but they cannot make changes so that means what is happening is you will need two set of users here one user who can make the changes the other user who can log in but not make the changes so here are the four options let's scan through it option a is trying to handle through a database field access such kind of access cannot be handled through a database field this is wrong because the access has to be handled before you even hit the database the option b says that you will create a second cognito user pool and add the suspended customers but you will still continue to have those people also in the first cognito user pool so so that you will have to check both the user pools not a good option why will you keep them in both the pools it will complicate things and it will not work also now option c is talking about cognito sync what is sync so it will sync application related user data across the devices okay that means if you have three mobiles you can sync your user profile data across those three devices without using backend does this question talk about uh, syncing does it question does this question talk about devices no so this cannot be an answer last one says you will move the suspended customers into a second cognitive group fantastic because you will not have it in the first group you will have all the suspended customers in the second group only and then you will define an appropriate im policy for that group which is perfect this is how you should be doing it this is my answer so what will happen is we will have two groups first group who can make the changes the second group which is the suspended user group who cannot make the changes so this is the final answer the last question for this part there is a aws account and suppose you are working for barclays bank and you are the employee but but now there is a third party contractor for example tcs and tcs employees work for barclays also as a contractor now you want to give access to tcs employees these are third party contractors to take certain iam functions and what you want to make sure is this tcs guys can only access these accounts using mfa multi factor authentication so the blah blah story is crap the main point here is you want to provide responsibilities for these user accounts using mfas how, how will you do that so there are four options always remember pool exists should be used this is a syntax there is no logic to it so now a a and d both are similar but one is saying deny the other is saying allow we want to deny people who do, are not authenticated through multi factor authentication 
so this is my answer this is the final answer please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button stay tuned for more such informative contents this is the end of part one see you in the next part